Welcome back to Ireland Live at 10. Now, survivors of the Magdalen Laundry say the government has reneged on its health care promises. Rights groups campaigning for the women are calling for the Quirk Report's recommendations to be implemented in full. They're singling out the medical card offer for particular criticism. I think I've gone through too much to be scared of death. I think death would be a comfort for what happened in the Magdalen Laundries. So I think that's what's given me the strength. This is Martina Kyo, a survivor of the Magdalen Laundries. She's suffering from lung cancer and is hoping to finally have justice before she dies after what she endured in the facilities. They were horrific. Um, you were locked up at half seven at night like criminals. The doors were locked. The only one was open was the toilets and hand sinks, which everything was freezing. Diane Crohan is also a Magdalen survivor. She remembers the laundries as a place where she was beaten for being left-handed and where she had to wash her hair in a basin full of lice. We had to queue in queues, but if you were the first, you were lucky. But if you were the last, you see, we all had lice, right? And when you, when you were the, maybe, maybe the tent person going up, the lice would be floating on top of the water. And you would kind of, you dared and say, oh, you know, or kick up. Your head was just pushed into it. Today, several human rights groups came together and criticised the government's response to the Magdalen survivors. They say draft legislation shows the coalition isn't sticking to the full compensation package that was promised. What we want to see is the uh, draft legislation being amended so that it no longer offers something that 91% of the women already have, namely a basic medical card, but it actually offers proper full rehabilitation without limitation of the sort that Judge Quirk recommended. We're asking for one thing and one thing only, that the government keep the promise that it made. Two years ago, the Taoiseach made an emotional apology to the women of the Magdalen Laundries, but today that isn't sitting well with the survivors. I half believed he was genuine, but something told me, is this a show? You know, and I felt it was a show, and I think I was right. The Department of Justice, for its part, says significant progress has been made on the implementation of the Magdalene Scheme and says nine out of 12 recommendations have been implemented. Stephanie Grogan, Ireland Live at 10. Well, we're joined now in the studio by Maeve O'Rourke of Justice for Magdalene's Research. Maeve, just quickly refresh our memories on the terms of the quirk and the, um, the other reports. Uh, and, and where do you think that they've let uh, the survivors down now? Well, as you know, 23 months ago, actually to the day, was the Taoiseach's heartfelt, and I do feel it was heartfelt, apology. And immediately the government put Mr Justice John Quirk, who's the current president of the Law Reform Commission, in charge of devising proposals for restorative justice. He made his recommendations to the government in May 2013 and in June straight away the government went on the Dole record and promised the women that they would implement every single one of his recommendations. So now we're in a process of the government establishing that scheme and they have been making compensation offers to the women and pension payments to the women. But still, as I say, 23 months on from the apology, the women are still waiting for the health and community care services that were an essential part of that compensation package. So Judge Quirk recommended as his very first recommendation, bearing in mind the health effects that the women's incarceration and forced labour had had on them and bearing in mind their advanced age he recommended that they should be given a card, a physical card, entitling each of them to the full range of services given to hepatitis C survivors. This is not just an ordinary medical card as we could call it, it do, does have very very special limitations. Absolutely, it's an it's an amazing card. I think any one of us would really like to have it, especially in our older age, to assure us of the care that we need. And especially someone in the financial situation that many of the Magdalene survivors are in. So it offers a range of private services that you simply cannot get with a regular medical card. Now, Judge Quirk found that 91% of the women have 
medical cards or GP visit cards. So this card was definitely intended to be a vast enhancement. Um, as we heard, the government did respond to our press conference today by saying that they have offered an enhanced medical card, but that's not apparent from the legislation that came through in December. The legislation really appears to us to provide very little more than the regular medical card. It makes multiple references to the 1970 Health Act, which is the Medical Card Act, when it talks about the GP, the oral, the ophthalmic and the dental services women will will receive. So that suggests to us little more than the regular medical card. Mm. The counselling services are vastly paired back. So HAA card holders receive counselling with no GP referral required for any member of their direct family for any reason for as long as they want. Whereas the legislation we've seen requires the women to have a GP referral. It's only for them and they can only receive counselling in respect of their time in the Magdalene Laundry. Now I know you've said that you felt that McAleese report didn't go far enough. Is another Another report needed, another investigation. Well, that is a separate issue, and um, to the immediate requirement for this health, um, the health benefits under the scheme. But it is something that we are very concerned about because it would seem, perhaps, that these issues are linked. So we would say that there is a requirement still to investigate the abuse that happened in the Magdalene Laundries. The McAleese investigation was not an investigation into the abuse that happened. It was specifically limited to looking at the state's involvement with the Magdalene Laundries. It wasn't the kind of investigation we're now seeing being proposed for mother and baby homes. It was not carried out by a judicial figure. It was not carried out entirely independently given that all of um, Senator McAleese's committee um, were senior civil servants and I think that the fact that that abuse was never investigated properly, the fact that findings were never made as to the extent of the servitude, forced labour, exploitation, abuse and neglect, the kind of thing we've just heard on your package. Mm -hmm. I think the fact that that's not been properly investigated may be leading us to a situation where the government doesn't accept yeah. the need for the health services. A complex issue indeed, maybe we'll leave it there. Thank you very much indeed. Now, a new report released today by...